Hi guys, I thought I'd do some lightweight camping for a change. Oof. As the name suggests, this is going to be the best um, Polish Lavu uh, on YouTube, possibly on the internet, possibly in the world. Just unfortunate that my pack's so heavy and I'm carrying a log burner as well. So, there's going to be plenty of brakes, plenty of rest stops, plenty of water. This is going to be a tough one guys, just get into the campsite. Water! I want me mum! Oh. Right guys, finally here. That was no mean feat, lugging this lot. Well, it's about four miles I think I've done. Maybe, yeah, three, four miles. Uh, the stove itself weighs 10 kilos. And the backpack is probably about 20 to 25 kilos. Probably more like 25. So, I've had plenty of breaks on the way here. I need to go and get some water because I've drunk. I've drunk all the water I had. Um, I have this, this water bottle full, it's a 600ml water bottle, that was full and I've drunk all of that and I brought one empty bottle so I brought my mini Soya mini system that's uh, attached to my bag still and uh, it's probably about 10 minute walk to the water source uh, so that's before I do anything else um, go and get some water because I've, I've, I've sweated like I don't know what on the way here. It was chuffing hard work. Right, so we're going to get some water and then we'll come back. I'm going to just leave all the stuff here. If anybody wants to come in and nick this and carry it out again, again, be my guest. Um, so let's get on with it. Well guys, just as I set the uh, camera up to do this bit of video in on the tripod, the uh, camera ended up in the drink. Luckily it's still working. But whether it continues to keep working remains to be seen. So I hope you do get to see the whole of this video. I mean the camera properly went in. It was, I've had to dry it off with my t-shirt. So anyway, yeah, just collecting some water. Like I said, I've, I've drunk, drunk everything I had on the way in. And uh, so this is going to be boring, this bit. So I'll just continue and uh, catch you guys in a bit. Well, that's the water collected. Now the lens, the viewfinder on the camera is beginning to fog up a little bit. So we're just gonna have to play it by ear whether the camera keeps working. Hopefully it will do. Right, let's head off back to camp. Okay, here I am back at camp uh, with water. I've got uh, probably about a litre and a half of water now. Now with this Levu, the way I've um, done the mods and what have you on it, uh, it has to be hung from a tree with a D-link at the top. Um, so I'm going to look for a suitable branch now. Got my eye on that one up there, but I might not be able to throw the rope that high. Anyway, um, I'm going to look for a suitable branch and then we'll get this levy up so you can see exactly what I've done on all the mods. Okay, so the first job, like I said, we get the rope over a branch if we can. For maybe need a bit more weight on it, I'm not sure. A bit of stuff or something. Mind you, the chances of it getting stuck a, a bit higher, aren't they? And it's got a stick on it. Let's go for that bit there. First attempt failed. Got it. 
Let it go. Wasn't too hard, was it? Alright, so like I said, this this is the view that I've created, modified, built, hangs from the centre, so um, there's no need for any poles. So I'll get it out of the bag, I'll get it strung up and I'll bring you back. Okay guys, there she is, she's up. Now I'm going to, um, going to put some of my stuff inside, get the bed sorted out, get the stove in. Uh, it does need to breathe for a little bit because uh, well, it needs to dry out. I fab sealed it recently, uh, like yesterday, and uh, I put it in a dry bag, stored it away when it was still wet, so it needs to air a little bit. Um, obviously, fab seal, I think, is flammable, so I don't really want to be having a, a stove in there that's hot when, you know, the fab seal's still wet. So I'm going to get all my stuff in, and then I'll give you the grand tour. Okay. So all my stuff's inside now. I've got a full uh, cot bed in there. Um, the stove's not gone in yet, but I wanted to show you inside before I set up the stove and I'll show you all that. Lot. So to begin with, on the front, I don't know if your camera's going to pick it up. I'll bring you a bit closer in a minute. But uh, we've got one main zip up the uh, up the front. I'm going to put links to everything that I'm using today in the description be below. Uh, if you want to do something similar, uh, I've got a few other items that I want, uh, want to show you as well. So on the front we've got a 16, full 16 zip. This is um, marine grade. Uh, I had to, there's only one supplier on Amazon that make them in this size, and I had to, I had to wait for it to come from America. Um, it didn't take that long, about two weeks I think it was. Uh, but a 16, a 16 zip. zip they're like gold dust on Amazon. Maybe on eBay you'll be able to get one, but this is a good, robust uh, marine one. It opens on, it's got tabs on the inside and the outside, so you can open it from the outside. I put two other zips along the bottom here, so that it can be opened fully. I'll show you that in a second. And the way that I've done these zips is because the tabs on the, well, on the inside or the outside, there's, there's no double tab, it's just one tab. So uh, I put one on the outside so I can get in and then I've got one that I've sewn in in reverse on the inside. I'll, I'll bring you in and show you that in a minute. Obviously I put tabs up around it so I can get it out, stretch it out a little bit, gives me a little bit more room and obviously I've got a second levu. I bought a second levu and put a skirt all the way around. Now because of the way it's pitched, it's the rope's leaning over to that way slightly. Uh, it, it's kind of, and the ground's unlevel. It's not really showing it off very well, but I'll take you around uh, and show you what else I've done. Okay, so here's here's the zip system I was talking about. Don't you about all this? This is just wax. Um, I've used beeswax and so your wax to wax everything in. It's I've hand sewn everything as you can see. It's not great my sewing. The only bit the me missus did was sew a hem round the bottom skirt. I'll show you that in a second. So I've got one. I've sewn on the inside. I've got that one that's a double double tabber. You can just see the tab there, uh, and I've sewn this one on the outside. So most people are complaining about uh, these lavoos being quite dark inside. Well, the answer to that is to sew yourself some windows in. Um, this is just uh, visqueen. It's not very. Uh, you can't see out of it very well. But uh, the idea is just to let a bit of light in. So we've got one there. We're going to come round the corner here. On the back we have two. Just give you a short close-up of that. All this has been um, hand sewn as well and waxed. So any white marks that are on the tent, uh, once it's been heated up a few times, it, sh it, sh it should uh, seep into it a little bit better. Right, so under here I don't know if the camera's going to be able to see it right I've got a big mesh bit in there I don't know if you can just, you can just about make it out big round circle then I've sewn a flap over it and I've got some wire to hold the flaps open um, just to let a bit of uh, ventilation in I've got two of them one one there and one there 
um, just sit around this side. I've also got another ventilation hole around here, just on the side under the window, just below the window here, and that's that's got a bit of velcro there, so I can hold it up like that. Just a little little bit of a more in ventilation, because I don't want to be getting carbon monoxide poisoning while I'm inside. Don't know what that is. So there's the other vent. So we've got one window. We've got two windows there, and the vents. We've got the stove jack here, so that will be like that in a in a short while when I put the the, um, the stove in there, and another window on this side. So coming back round to the doors, there's the doors. Okay, also concerning the doors, I've sewn in a ground sheet, as you can tell, but I've left it here and I've put a zip, the wind's getting up a bit now, um, I've put a zip on this part of the door, which is the skirt, so that I can unzip that, it's an open zip so it'll come right off the end and I can open that out and also that side, so I can have the whole entire thing open open for one to two, sorry about the uh, the lens cap thing. Right, let's get inside. So, there's some of my tools, my axe, my saw, my water. Under the bed, plenty of storage under the bed. So there's my pantry, we're having, uh, we're having rainbow trout later on with uh, asparagus and a few mushrooms and I've got all sorts in there. Oh and I've got a couple of hobgoblins there as well. Right, so there's my cot bed. I should have really taken the camera off the tripod to show you this. So that's my 70 litre rucksack. I can fit quite comfortably down there. Um, bedding wise I've just brought an inflatable uh, mat with me that I'm going to put on the cot bed and my DD uh, top quilt for my hammock. That's all I've brought because I reckon it's going to be pretty warm in here once this stove gets going. So there's plenty of space here. In case you're wondering what the uh, the fire blanket is for down there, that's to put on the on the floor when I uh, when I get the stove in. And there's the stove jack there, which is uh, you bolt these things in. Comes in three parts. And also up here, I've put a little. Uh, uh, it's one of Max's old chains when he was a little puppy. It's got a little uh, little clip on it. I've just sewn that into the roof. So you can tell that without a pole in here, it is quite big. You know, um, just to show you out the window. So you can't really see anything out the window. But uh, like I say, the main, the main thing for the windows is just to let a bit of light in, and it does, it does line it up. So let's. Um, I'm going to get well over there. I've got my uh, my stove and my hurricane lamp. Um, so I'm going to get them two in, uh, but first of all I'm going to close the door and see just how dark it is in here. Right, okay guys, so as you can see, it is quite light in here. Um, like I say, a lot of people have been complaining that they're too, uh, they're too dark, but just put some, just put some windows in it. Um, total man hours that I've gone into building this, uh, probably around about 100 hours. Sometimes working in the dark at night with a torch uh, because the lighting is not very good in our house um, in the dining room, which is the only place in the house where I could do it, which was big enough for this amount of material to be all over the place. Uh, Mrs. was pulling her hair out a few times with me, but it's done now. Um, as well, I've sewn the ground sheet in with the silver side up just to reflect a little bit more light. Uh, that's the only reason. So let's get this stove in now and uh, whew, it's been hard work. Get the stove in. It looks like it's going to start raining soon. Um, I think tonight it will rain. But uh, we need to get some firewood, obviously. So I'm going to lay the uh, the fire fire blanket out in now, which is, a, I think it's a metre by a metre one, this one. Again, links in the descriptions below. And... Uh, Let's get some firewood uh, firewood sorted out for, for later on. I've left the ground sheet. Not only it serves two purposes, not having it sewn all the way around at the front. Um, if it's particularly muddy, 
you could just peel back the uh, the ground sheet at the front door and put your muddy boots down there and obviously you can st stack logs there if you wanted to but I'm I'm thinking it's a door and I might need to get out in a, in a rush so I'm going to stop put the logs down where my gloves and me uh, uh, my fire blanket is so uh, yeah I hope you're enjoying the video so far it has been a labour of love making this thing it really has um, but now it's done right fab sealing I did run out I used two litres in one of them spray the hose lock pressurised spray bottle thing again links in the description um, yeah I, I used two litres and I kind of ran out about there was about a quarter left to do so um, they've been in storage for a while these this the issue date with this with these with one of these uh, was 1977 and the one that I used for the bottom half as you can see the skirt down there uh, that Levu was issued 1980 something I think um, they did come with little tabs of paperwork uh, stitched onto the buttons um, but uh, I thought it you didn't want to see that so the only thing bit fiddly but there we go and everything's stored inside as well they are quite heavy these things right so I've just got to position it now and uh, sorry if looking at the ground okay so I've just got to position it now uh, okay there's the stove set up on the inside with the uh, flue going out the stove jack this is a little damper so you can open it or close it. All the pipe sections uh, do fit in the front of the stove, well do fit inside the belly of the stove. Um, and also you get this little bit on top so you can you can either you know you could fuel it from the top if you wanted to but most people use the doors and also that's so you can put a pan on there as well but I tend to use it with that on <coughs> right um, one of the other things about these stoves is I know a few people on YouTube have complained about them getting rusty now what you have to do with them is um, you have to do a couple of small burns low low burns uh, I bought them the fire blocks that you can get where you just light the end of the paper and the block uh, sets itself on a fire. On fire. Um, I bought a couple of them and I did two burns just with one log in uh, and that anneals the paint. The, um, the paint is obviously heat proof paint but when they ship them to you that's what they suggest you do. This is the Outbacker stove, very similar to the Frontier stove. Um, yeah so the you need to do a couple of low burns just to anneal the paint and then you know you can put as many logs in after that as you want so you do a burn let it cool do a burn let it cool and then you're operational after that so I'll just wish you outside and we'll have a look at the uh, the flue assembly outside so there it is with the uh, Sparker Restaurant on top Now, if you can just make out, I don't know if you can see, but there is some wires hanging down that I've put on myself. I'll just point to them, see if we can see them. These wires I've put on myself because you get three points at the top. So if in high winds, if you needed to guide rope this out, you could do using these wires. Obviously, this tube all gets hot. So um, all I've used there is a couple of connections out of... Uh, chocolate blocks electrical chocolate blocks I think they're called or connection blocks and the cable is just some uh, some brake cable from my push bike that I had lying about so um, that's so that's just uh, just in case you need to guide out but unfortunately I've not brought uh, the guide ropes with me I've run out of paracord completely so uh, I'm gonna have to order some some more paracord okay guys so um, stockpile some wood there I've got a little bit there for starting it off 
just need to go and find some tinder now so it shouldn't be too hard of a task okay so just got the door there's two two settings for the door there's if you can see down there there's a bit of a gap that's so that you can get a good draw through the stove and we've got smoke coming out the top that will uh, dissipate when that will go clear sorry when um, when it's when the fire is going properly but we've just started it up let's have a look inside so there you go put a few more twigs on that now get it going properly and then I can close the door So as you can see when the stove's in operation there's no smoke in the tent whatsoever. The pipe's beginning to get a bit warm now. It's not properly heated up yet that pipe. And we've got hardly any smoke which is good. That's saying that it's uh, burning effectively. A little bit of smoke when you open the door, but apart from that, when the door's closed, as you can see, no smoke. Okay guys, so down this, down this side here, you can see a bit of a rail. You could hang tea towels, that kind of thing, on that to uh, dry out. Also the handle, but just do bear in mind guys that these parts do become hot. So if you've got nylon socks, you don't want to be hanging your nylon socks on there. Uh, I've noticed a few wisps of smoke coming out from the chimney join there, but nothing concerning. And the flange is warm, but uh, it's not getting hot, red hot like the flu. If I was to touch the flu then I'd burn myself obviously, but yeah, it's doing its job. Well, not quite tea time, but why not like get a brew? Let's get a brew on. It's the only way to do it, guys, with a kettle. This style of uh, cooking. And I've just realised that I brought my frying pan with me, but not the handle. So I'm hoping my gloves. I'm hoping these leather gloves that I've got are going to be hot enough, uh, strong enough for me to pick this up when it's roasting up. Right, so what have we got today? We've got a good selection of uh, Oxo cubes in there, we've got some original beef ones, I think them green ones are vegetable and the purple ones are lamb. I reckon I'm going to go with lamb. Okay, a new item that, uh, that I've recently purchased is this. It's the Grizzly Bushcrafter Knife. I think it's called? Yeah, the Grizzly Bushcraft. This one is the wooden scales, obviously. Uh, very sharp, legal carry. Uh, I think it's two and a half inch blade. Uh, good solid braid. Obviously, you wouldn't be battening wood down with it or anything like that, but it's okay for small tasks. And it does come with a little little pouch. Uh, nice little knife, that. Also on here, that's me pouch or I keep tinder in there. It's uh, The pouch is designed for ammo for catapults. Uh, obviously this bit folds down as a little magnet so you can pick your ammo out but I've super glued that up and I just use it as a little leather pouch. And on the other side, a bit awkward but I've got uh, my Zippo pouch. And then right round the back is my axe loop that I made out of an old belt. So we've nearly got a nearly got a boil now. So it's taken about seven minutes. Um, the fire had died down quite a lot and I didn't realise. So I've just uh, 
because he stocked it. These are the cutlery that I'm using today. What I like to call my bushcraft cutlery. Pretty unusual. They're um, hand forged items. I think I've got them off Amazon, but I can't remember to be honest with you. I might have even got my eBay, but they are hand forged by someone, handmade. Very, uh, very bushcrafty. So, uh, let's see if this is boiling yet. This is the way to go camping. It's heavy, but it's luxury. Okay, so I've got my rainbow trout. I've got an egg that I'm gonna poach. Got some mushrooms. And I've got some asparagus. Quite a lot for one person, that, but I like asparagus, so. So there we go. I'm gonna keep this little tray. I can use that as a container. I'm gonna get some uh, water in my pan. In my pot, should I say, so I can poach my egg and get that on the stove straight away. Would have been nice to have a bit of uh, white wine vinegar to put in that, and a bit of salt and pepper, but I haven't got any with me. So we're going to get that on. Get this stove up to temperature. A little bit of vegetable oil. There's only one problem with this, and that is that I haven't brought a spatula with me, so things could get messy. There we go, guys. Look at that. Look at the colouring on that. Into the pan. Oh, that's a bit of it. That's a piece of fish that is, right there. Oh yes, this is the way to go. <clears throat> Loving it. Let's get these going. This looks like it's doing nicely. A little bit longer for the asparagus. As you can see, my fish is broken up, but well, that's fine. It all goes down the same way. I want to make sure it's cooked properly. Get them mushrooms in the oil there. Oh, I'm chucking out some meat the stove is. There we have it, guys. Rainbow trout, asparagus, mushrooms, and a poached egg. All washed down with a good bottle of hot goblin. Cheers, guys. Well guys, that's the hurricane lamp lit. Just going to keep an eye on it up here because it does uh, does generate quite a lot of heat from the top of it. They're supposed to be for um, putting on tables, that kind of thing. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Just don't want it melting the uh, the strap that I've put up there, and then that falls down, paraffin everywhere, and it could be very, very messy and dangerous. Yeah, it was getting too hot up uh, up in the roof. You're not going to be able to see it anyway. 
It's getting too hot there, so I've brought it down to uh, ground level. Well, I know the uh, camera's not going to pick it up very well, but the hurricane lamp is chucking quite a bit of light out. I can see what I'm doing. I've got my other Petzl torch up there, just hung there um, for a bit of light. I'm actually thinking of doing my bacon and stuff. Um, maybe in a bit. Maybe out for supper rather than breakfast. Okay, so I didn't actually tell you um, what the lamp is. It's the Furin Hand uh, Baby Special 276. Uh, Furin Hand is spelt F E U E R H A N D. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, if you're going to buy one of these kind of lamps, I would go for uh, a reputable make one rather than this one was actually close to twenty pound. Uh, I have seen them uh, for about six quid, but uh, then the quality of them is nowhere near as good as this. This is a German company. Uh, they've been going since 1902, uh, making these kind of lamps. Uh, it's all genuine, uh, all genuine German stuff. It's got all the you won't be able to see it, but uh, it's got all the markings down at the base. Even on the glass, the glass is super, super something or other. Um, it's like a heat resistant glass, uh, anti sutting, all that kind of jobby. So I uh, don't want to bang on too much about the lamp. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's certainly making it feel like I'm a frontier man. Let's put it that way with the stove as well. I mean, it's the stove's still going. I've just opened the uh, opened the choke up a little bit. See if we can just give you a, a quick look outside at the chimney with the torch. Is it gonna show it? There you go. So she's chuffing away like a good one. Oh, there we go guys, I decided to uh, have a bit, of a bit of a fry up for my supper. Get these mushrooms in, got more mushrooms than I can shake a stick at. Oh, the smell in this tent is something else. Oh, and here we go. Got a bit of bacon in there. Couple of mushrooms. And there we have it. I am going to enjoy this, folks. Right guys, uh, not much more to report now, just letting the uh, stove die down, it's having its last burn and then it's 11 o'clock now so the wood that I did collect has lasted me, what, six hours, started the stove off at about five o'clock, uh, still pumping out some heat it is, but uh, yeah, I've got my roll mat down now on top of my, uh, my bed cot, so that's all, that's all comfy, so I'll see you in the morning guys. Right, good morning guys, uh, all packed up now, just on my way home, it was a very pleasant camp this one, um, everything worked perfectly and as it should do, the only downside of camping like this is it is a touch on the heavy side, uh, I wouldn't recommend it for backpacking but uh, if you've got a vehicle and you can park your vehicle close to where you're going to camp then uh, this system is ideal. It is a winter system at the end of the day, so you do tend to carry a little bit more weight 
in the winter. Um, it could be used without the stove if we just put a cap on the uh, on the sto on the stove jack uh, to stop water getting in. But yeah, it's been uh, it's been really good. Uh, the time now is about ten o'clock, I think. Just gone. Uh, I woke up about half seven this morning, listened to the dawn chorus and what have you, and it's been uh, it's been nice. It's just started drizzling a little bit, but uh, as you can see, I haven't got my coat on because I'm just too hot. Um, yeah, it's been a good one. So I'll see you all on the next video, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like, subscribe, and click the little bell so you get notifications of my videos every time I upload. Thanks a lot, guys.